Welcome to the Dana Foundation Archival Database. There are 100 years of data available. What time period would you like to start with? Accessing 1950s. The Dana Foundation was founded by businessman Charles A. Dana in 1950. He approached philanthropy with an entrepreneur's eye. He looked for places where his investment could make the biggest difference. Dana's early focus was on education and health research. My grandfather found himself a business success and had no particular interests for himself. He never liked to spend money on himself. So he lived very humbly, but he realized what he could do uh, if he focused grants in the right direction. So the idea of starting a foundation in 1950, it all sort of gelled. He went to the South, he went to the Berry schools, and he found these places. He also figured out what their needs were. He was a very practical Vermonter, and he liked the idea of being able to do more good in these independent colleges. Accessing 1960s. Alongside its support of education, the foundation's support for health research grew, primarily in cancer research. During the 1960s, Dana developed a relationship with Dr. Sidney Farber, whose breakthrough successes in treating childhood cancers were saving lives. Sidney Farber was uh, a brilliant, brilliant doctor of his day, particularly known for childhood cancers. There was a time when 85 to 90% of the kids that got leukemia would die. Dr. Farber was instrumental in breaking that down. Accessing 1980s. Foundation Chairman David Mahoney recognized the vast potential of brain research to improve lives. With concerns about mental health and Alzheimer's disease rising, he steered the Foundation's focus toward brain science. David became very supportive of neuroscience because as chairman of a Fortune 500 company, he saw quite a bit of addiction, he saw depression, he saw stroke. The pivot basically to neuroscience was when President George Herbert Walker Bush declared the 90s to be the decade of the brain. David felt that the Dana Foundation should be at the forefront of neuroscience research. Accessing 1990s. The Foundation fostered greater public understanding of brain health and disease through the founding of the Dana Alliance for Brain Initiatives. Our groundbreaking campaigns like Brain Awareness Week began to reach people worldwide. The Dana Alliance helped build a culture where scientists recognized the value of communicating with members of the public, especially policymakers. Accessing 2000s. By the early 21st century, the Dana Foundation was funding cutting-edge neuroscience research and began exploring interdisciplinary work such as neuroimmunology, arts and cognition, neuroethics, and neuroscience and law. It also continued to champion public outreach to empower people to better understand their brains, make informed decisions about their health, and bridge the gap between science and society. The trick for us, not, not just in the clinic, but as scientists, is to explain with real humility what we know, what we're relying on, but what we don't yet know. We have to tread that line as honestly and with as much uh, directness as we can muster. Neuroethics is uh, a term that actually was coined as part of the Dana Foundation in 2002. William Sapphire decided we should open the aperture and not only support neuroscience experiments, but ask what their broader implications were. Our brains are unique, right? They, they represent our personalities, our hopes, our fears, our capacities. And we are, in, in essence, intervening in this organ that is about us. And so we have to think not only about the ethical questions, what are we doing to people, do they understand, but about the broader societal implications under the leadership of William Sapphire and Edward Rover, the Dana Foundation used the first decades of the 21st century to explore the social, legal, ethical, and policy implications of neuroscience. In 2021, the Foundation hired Caroline Montoho as CEO to usher in the next era. 
We're living in an extraordinary time for neuroscience right now. Discoveries that are happening have the potential to transform healthcare, to fuel technological innovation, and to strengthen our economy. And this is all thanks to the incredible scientists and engineers out there doing this work. Brain-computer interfaces can help restore speech and movement in people who have lost these abilities. But they also bring up some serious ethical and societal considerations. For example, how do we protect our brain data privacy when these technologies are getting so sophisticated that they can even decode intended speech from brain activity? This is why the Dana Foundation is focused on this field of neuroscience and society. We aim to bridge the gap between lab research and the real-world impact it can have on people's lives in areas like healthcare, innovation, and justice. One of the main ways we're bringing this vision to life is through the Dana Center Initiative. It's at the heart of our Neuroscience and Society mission. It's a nearly $20 million partnership between research institutions, scientists, scholars from other disciplines, and the communities they serve to co-create the future of neuroscience. After reviewing more than 40 competitive proposals, we are delighted to be partnering with Loyola University Chicago, Mass General Brigham, and UCLA in partnership with Charles Drew University. The new Dana Center initiative immediately began showing results, bringing together communities, scientists, and academia. Here are some of our successes. I really couldn't believe when I saw this call it was so perfect. And this call gave us the opportunity at UCLA to bring people together that had been siloed in their individual fields and to reach out to community partners like Community Coalition and a group called Family and to the Charles Drew University, which is located in the heart of South Los Angeles, and to start a conversation about what's important, what we need to be researching, what do we need to do to create a common language so we even understand each other. I'm not unique or alone. Many neuroscientists are looking to figure out how their basic research can impact the world and make it a better place. What inspired me to be part of the Dana Center initiative was a few things. I've always had a really strong interest in neuroscience, I'm a neurosurgeon, and then also this interest in public health and how we actually get access to patients that need the things that we're capable of doing. So I think what Neurotech Justice Accelerator and MGB does and enables that we couldn't do before in the field of equity and justice and neuroscience is collaboration for the people that are like me, that are like my collaborators, Francis Shen and Gabe Lazaro Munez, who kind of want to be in between in neuroscience. They want to cross between neuroscience and the law, or neuroscience and medicine and equity um, and research, I think it gives a training ground and a place for people that are trying to develop that skill set and trying to have that broader impact on neuroscience. By 2025, alongside the Dana Center Initiative, the Dana Foundation supported more than 130 neuroscience and society grants in education, training, and public engagement. These grants, paired with field building efforts, paved the way for neuroscience and society to thrive. In the following decades, the Dana Foundation partnered with private and public funding organizations to advance neuroscience that benefits society. Neuroscience and society experts are appointed to influential committees guiding institutional policy, and neuroscience and society curricula are integrated into classrooms, teaching that we have the power to shape our future through brain science. Archivist, it appears you are gathering data for the 100th anniversary of the Dana Foundation. Congratulations on this momentous centennial anniversary. Would you like to see my projections for the next 100 years of the Dana Foundation? Let's begin. <laughs>